Can you see my screen? So yeah. yeah, today we continue learn chapter three, section seven. This section will it、uh, help you to build the something, the figures like triangle or perpendicular or angle bisector. Use、uh, the knowledge is what we learn. Okay. So now let's see. See here. Let's see first one. You know, as a reminder, we once more repeat the rules of the game for construction. You can only use、uh, street H and uh, uh, and the compass. Okay, you cannot use、uh, protractor. Okay, you can also can also cannot use ruler. Okay, so now let's see here. This is a rule. The only operations you can perform with compass and、uh, straight edge are one, give you a point. You can draw any any line through this point. Okay, so that means if we give you a point. You can use a straight edge draw line pass through this point. So this one definitely it's a、uh, it's reasonable. You know, if we give you a point, suppose this one is A, then you can use your straight edge. You can draw a line pass through this point. Okay, this is what you can do. Two, give you two points. You can draw a line that pass through these two points. Okay. Suppose we give you another point B. You can draw a line pass through these two points. Use、uh, your straight edge. Three. Give a point. You can draw any circle centered at that point. So if we give you Any point here, you can draw a circle. Okay, use that、uh, point as a center. Okay, what I here is not accurate, but then you can do this way. Use your compass, the one feet fixed put here. Then open your compass. Then. Use that open openness as your radius. Then you can draw a circle like this. This is the third one. Number four, give you a point and a segment. You can draw a circle with its center at the point, with the radius equals the length of this segment. Right. So that means. If we give you a segment, suppose this segment is AB. Okay, the left side in the section point is A, right side is B. So that means you can use A as a center, use AB as a radius to draw a circle. Okay, you can draw a circle. Now. Definitely, you can do. You can draw a circle, something like this, right? Use A as a central point, AB as a radius. Use your compass. It's very easy for you to draw a circle. <clears throat> Now, five. Given two points, you can draw a circle through one point, such that another point is the center of the circle, right? If we give you two points, then you can draw a circle just like you use this one point、uh, as a center, another point、uh, on the radius on the circle, right? Just like this. 
Okay, so this is uh, what you can do. Use uh, compass and uh, straight edge. Then, based on what this knowledge is, we can build the other uh, geometry shapes. Now, let's see first one. 3.22. Construct an equilateral triangle with compass and uh, straight edge. Okay. So they only allow you use compass and a straight edge. They ask you to contribute a equilateral triangle. So you need to think how you can do this. This one actually is very easy. First, you can use a straight straight edge to draw a line segment. Okay? You use your straight edge, draw a line segment. Suppose this one is A, this one's B. Now, if you try to draw an equilateral triangle, now let's suppose each side of this triangle equals AB. So that means we need to find another point. That point have the same distance to A and to B, also that equals AB. How to do that? To do that, you can use uh, A as a center point. Use AB as a radius to draw a circle, right? So this number four is also tell us, you can use your compass, use one point as a center, then the length of this line segment as a radius, you can draw a circle, right? Suppose we just draw a partial circle, draw an arc. We can draw you this one center, something that we'll draw like here, okay? Then you also will have an arc like here. Then you switch, you use a B as a center. Then you still use a AB as a radius to draw another arc. Suppose you draw here for this part, this side. You draw here to this side. Then say you got the two intersection point. Suppose this one is a C. This one the C prime. Then you use your straight edge, connect this AC and BC. Now this triangle, that will be a equilateral triangle. This is a one equilateral triangle. Then you can also connect. A with C prime and B with C prime. Then you got another triangle A, B, C prime. Then this A, B, C prime also is an equilateral triangle. Each side of nuts equals A, B. Now let's see, we can prove this. This is very easy. When we draw this arc, we use A as a center. AB as a radius. So that means here, this AC equals AB, right? And this AC prime also equals AB because we use A as a center, AB as a length to draw this arc and this arc. Then when we use B as a center, AB as a radius to draw this arc, and this arc. So that means BC and uh, BC prime also equals AB. Then after we found this intersection point C, then you can see AC equals AB also equals BC. And uh, AC prime equals BC prime also equals AB. So then, you know, this triangle ABC is what you're looking AB C prime is also what you 
also satisfy the requirement. That's what we get here, right? So think, you just do this way, you can use your compass and a straight edge, you can build a equilateral triangle, right? This is what we do here. Now, let's see second problem, 3.23. They ask you to draw a segment AB. We call the line that is perpendicular to AB and the path through the middle point of AB, the perpendicular bisector of AB. This one called the perpendicular bisector of AB. Bisector that means separated to the two equal parts. Then construct the perpendicular bisector of AB. So now let's see. First, you draw a line segment AB. Suppose this one is AB. Then they ask you find the nine perpendicular bisector of AB. Okay, how to do it, this? To do this, it's very similar to build up the equal lateral triangle. Then you can do this way. Use A as a center point. Use AB as a radius to draw arc here, suppose here, and here, and here, okay? Then you use B as the center point. Then you draw arc, arc, this one, and this one. So then you can get this two intersection point. Suppose this one is uh, C, this one is C prime. Now you connect these two points. You connect these two points. What I draw here is not accurate, okay? Something I think it should be like this. Okay, anyway, you just connect these two points. Then, now let's prove. This line will perpendicular and bisector this uh, AB. Suppose there is intersection at uh, M. Now, you can connect AC, BC, and uh, B prime, C prime. Now let's see how we can prove this first AM equals MB and also C, C prime perpendicular with AB. Okay, so to do this, let's first prove this triangle congruent with this one. So that means in triangle, triangle A, C, C prime, and B, triangle B, C, C prime. You can see, because AC equals BC, AC prime also equals BC prime. All these four sides are equal. And also they share the side C, C prime. So that means these two triangles are congruent. So we have AC equals BC equals AC prime equals BC prime. Because this, all these four sides are the radius of the circle. Where you all use AB, also this one also equals AB. They are equal. Then we also have side CC prime. This side shared by these two triangles. 
Then combine this information, we can use SSS theorem. We prove these two triangles are congruent. A, C, C prime. Congruent with triangle B, C, C prime. Right? By proof these two triangles are congruent, then that means this angle will equal this angle. This angle will equal this angle, right? Now, let's go here. Prove this triangle ACM and uh, BCM. See, these two triangles if congruent. Now, in triangle ACM and BCM. You know, first, AC equals BC. Zero equals the radius. Then, the CM is shared. Then, we already proved the angle ACM equals angle BCM from the congruent of triangle ACC and BCC, BC, ACC prime and BCC prime. We get this angle equal this angle. So combine this side congruent with this side. The same is shared. This angle equals this angle. So we got a SAS, SAS. Then these two triangles are congruent. S A S theorem. We got a triangle A C M congruent with triangle B C M. Right. After these two triangles are congruent, then we can get two things. One, A M equals B M. Right. These two, these triangles congruent with this one, then AM and BM, they are corresponding sides. So that means AM equals BM. Then we also can get angle AMC equals angle BMC. These two angles are corresponding angles. We still don't know their, if they're a right angle. But definitely we know this angle will equal this angle, right? Because these two angles are corresponding angles in these two triangles. Then, you know, A and B, there's a line form a straight angle. Form a straight angle at M. Straight angle at M. So then that means from this you can get angle AMC plus angle BMC equals 180 degree. Right? That means this angle equals 180 degree. Then combine with this condition. These two angles are equal. So then we can get this each angle equals 90 degree. So that means AMC equals BMC equals 90 degree. Okay, so that means we prove this one is 90 degree. So by this way, say we already proved the CC prime perpendicular with AB and also separate AB as two equal parts, AM. BM. So that's the reason we call this line it's a perpendicular bisector of AB. So now by draw this uh, two arcs, we got these two intersection point. We connect these two intersection point. We got a C C prime. This line segment actually perpendicular bisector of segment AB. Okay? So that's what we proved here.
you can see what do we draw here that's uh, the perpendicular bisector of AB. So now let's see, we already finished this uh, 3.23. Then we actually finish this uh, section. Now let's go to next section. Actually, it's already finished this chapter. Summary. See, what do we learn in this chapter? In this chapter, we learn a lot of stuff. The most important stuff that's congruent. You need to understand what is a congruent. Congruent, that means two shapes. They are actually exact same. If you don't consider their uh, position and uh, direction, we only consider their size and the shape, then the two triangles, here we only consider about triangles. If they are congruent, that means they are exact same in the shape and size. Now, to decide if a tri triangle, if two triangles are congruent, we can use four rows. That's S, S, S. That's three sides. Okay, three sides theorem. We can also use two sides with the angle, but this angle should be uh, in the between the, these two sides. We cannot be the another angle, not in form by these two sides. That's not a theorem. SAS will guarantee these two triangles are congruent. ASA. ASA will guarantee these two triangles are congruent. So that means if you have two angles and uh, the side that's in in the between these two angles then you can get these two triangles are congruent actually AAS is also zero so that means you don't need to have that side it's just between these uh, two angles because after you have two pair of angles are congruent, then the other angles also will congruent because the other angle equals 180 minus sum of these two angles. So that means AAS also will be a theorem to prove the two triangles are congruent. Then, now let's see. Okay, now let's see the other things you need to pay attention. That's uh, SSA is not a theorem. Okay, you should know what's the reason. Okay, so then we uh, finished this sec this uh, chapter. Now your homework, you need to finish all these uh, review problems. And uh, for challenge problem, that's a uh, volunteer. You can do it if you like. Okay, now let's go to next chapter, chapter four, parameter and area. This one, it's still will focus on the triangle. Now, what is the parameter? Parameter just like the sum of the three sides of a triangle, we call it that parameter of triangle. But definitely this also will con con uh, extend it to all the pentagon, even the circle. That's the length of the closed shape. If you imagine you are, you can walk along the all sides of this uh, pentagon, then that's the distance, that's the length you walked. If you start from one point, then return to that point. Say, suppose you start from this D, 
then first you go E, then you go F, then you come back to D. Then what is the distance you walked? That's called a parameter. Now for a circle, that's also the same thing. You start from the one point, suppose start from here, start from here, then you go, you can choose go uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. Then when you return, once you walk a full circle, come back to this A, the distance you walked, that's called uh, for circle, that's circumference. That's actually the same with the parameter, okay? So parameter then we only use for the pedagogy, pedagogy for the circumference that's for the circle, but they have the same meaning, it's meaningful. That just means you, the distance, if you walk along the, this shape, the distance you walked for when you start from any point, then you return to that point. So now let's see some example here. 4.1. Triangle ABC, it's an equilateral triangle. Find AB given that parameter of triangle ABC equals 36. Then they ask you, Find the each side of equilateral triangle. Suppose they give you the parameter that's 36. So this one is very easy. Just divide by three, right? Then you can find the, the mass of AB, right? So here they give you the parameter of this equilateral triangle. This one's A, B, C. They said parameter that's 36, then they ask you to find AB. So that means AB times 3 equals 36. Then AB equals 12. Right? This is pretty easy. Now let's see next one. Find the parameter of the triangle DEF. This is a plot here. So they give you the base, that's 8 root 3. They give you this side equals 8. But they also give you these two angles equals 30 degree. So that means this one is a isosceles triangle. So that means this side also equals 8. Okay. Then find the parameter of this triangle you can just do 8 plus 8 then plus 8 root 3 so this one they give you 16 plus 8 times root 3 this is a parameter okay it's also very very easy now let's see next one this one they give you this shape. See, given each little square in the grid, it's one by one square. They ask you to find the perimeter of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Okay? Say this one. Each small square, that's one by one. Then they ask you what is the perimeter of this uh, this uh, solid black color shape. What is the parameter of this this shape? Everybody do it, then send me your answer. Now let me check, see if who can get this one right. Yeah, Lucy, you're right. 
Who else? Yeah, Suri, you're right. This one, you have a shortcut. You know the Matt double check answer. Richard, you're right. No, Matt, you need to check. Ginny, you're right. See, the basic way, you just need to count. Right, count each side, then add it together. Now let's we can count from here. One, two, three. You can put three here. One, two, three. That's three. See here, one, two, three. Here that's one. Here also one. Now let's write two here. See one, two, three. Let's write three here. So then one, two, write two here. This one that's ten, right? So this one's two. So then you add these numbers together. Let's say uh, that will be six. There will be say four threes and three twos. Four threes. Uh, that's twelve. Twelve. Twelve plus uh, plus six. Eh? Now let's see. One, two, this three, this two. Oh no, this not oh this is three, this is two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, this one's not uh, ten. I write this one wrong. That's eight. Then you can calculate this together. One, two, three, four. Four threes, that's equals twelve. Then three Two, that's six. Add it together, that's eighteen, right? Eighteen plus this eight, you got a twenty-six. So definitely, this one's correct answer, right? But this one, it uh, takes time. If I make this one bigger, maybe it's very easy to make a mistake when you count each side. Actually, the smart way, you move this segment go to here. You move this one to here, so then you don't need this. This, then you move this one to here. Move this one to here. Move this one to here. So then you will finally you will get uh, a rectangle just like this. When you push this side to here, this side to here, this side to here, this to here, this to here, then it's very easy to calculate this one. That will be equals, say this side that's 8, this side that's uh, 5. So then you got the 5 plus 8, then times 2. This one gives you the parameter, that's 26. So next time, when you see this kind of shape in a graph, this definitely should be the street. You should you should not like this. That would be different, right? But they see this kind of shape, then they ask you what is the parameter of this shape. That's just need to calculate the parameter of this large rectangle. That would be the answer. You can think the reason is you can push this side here, push this one 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 here. Then you got exactly the this rectangle. Okay, that's shortcut. Now let's go to 4.4. See this problem said the length of each leg of uh, isosceles triangle is three times the length of the base of the triangle. The parameter of the triangle is 91. Then they ask you what is the length of the base of the triangle. Everybody do this. Now let's see who can get this one correct. So here they give you a 
isosceles triangle. Now, suppose I draw this isosceles triangle here. This one is A, this one is B, this one is C. So suppose AB equals AC. And uh, say length of each leg of isosceles triangle is three times the length of the base of the triangle. Okay, so that means AB equals three times of BC. AC also equals, equals three times of BC. Suppose this one's X. This one will be 3X. This also will be 3X. Then they ask you the parameter of the triangle. Parameter of triangle, they give you that's 91. So that means 3X plus 3X plus x, this one equals 91. Then they ask you the nuts of the base. So you solve this equation, you get a 7x equals 91. Then both sides divided by 7, you get a 13. Okay, so that means base of this triangle equals 13. Now let's see, Richard got it correct. Lucy got it correct. Suri got it correct. Very good. So, see, I already emphasized a lot of time. Any time when you try to solve a math problem, try to draw a diagram first. You don't need to draw a fancy or very accurate diagram. Just use your pen or pencil to draw a very basic diagram help you to understand this problem. Then, then when you draw this diagram right, almost you already get this problem half done. So what I draw here, see it is not accurate at all. Then, but then from this one I can say, suppose they ask us to find the base BC. We don't know that. We can see that's the X. Then we get these two legs, each one equals 3x. Then they give us the parameter equals 91. So that means 3x plus 3x plus x equals 91. Then we solve x from this equation, we get x equals 13. Okay, so this is uh, what we should do. By this way, we finish this uh, section. Now let's go to next section. Next section, this section we will learn the area. Area it's uh you know the definition of area it's like this. Suppose you have a shape. Uh suppose this uh square it's a one by one. It's a one by one square, each side of this square equals one. Now, if we try to calculate the area, if this one, each side is one, that means area of this square, that's equals one times one, that's one. Now, if we try to calculate the area of this rectangle, that means you need to use a one by one square to fill in this uh, rectangle. See how many one by one squares in this uh, rectangle. Then that number will transmit the area of this rectangle. If you can get exactly the integer number of the one by one square to fill entirely the inside of this uh, rectangle, that means the area of this rectangle is also an integer. If you cannot fill exactly, so that means the area of this rectangle will be a decimal or will be a fraction. Okay, so now let's see how we can calculate the area of a ship, like triangle or other ship. Let's see here. Suppose we have this shape. The 
ask us to find the area of this shape. We just use one by one square to fill in this shape. See, this is a whole one by one. Here another one by one. Here another one by one. But then we have this part left. We cannot fill this part, right? But then you can count one, two, three. This we got the three uh, whole squares. But this one it's a half of a one by one square. So then by this way we got the area of this shape equals three and a half, right? You got this shape A B C D E F. That's equal A B C D E F equals three and uh, half. Now let's see this problem 4.5. In this problem, we have a rectangle ABCD. AB equals CD. AB equals CD equals 4. Okay, this one's a rectangle, so that means AB should equal CD. And BC equals AD equals 5. Now and the right angles A, B, C, D. These four angles are right angles. Then they ask you what is the area of A, B, C, D. So think, definitely I think you, most of you already know the area formula for a rectangle. Suppose you don't know. Then you just use a one by one square to fill in this uh, rectangle then think how many one by one squares can fill in this rectangle definitely that will be four times five right that will be 20 one by one little squares can fill in this uh, rectangle so by this way we know this area of this rectangle that's equals 20 right Say so if you you can imagine use one by one square little square to fill in this uh, rectangle, then you can put twenty small squares. Then you can fill exactly the entire of this uh, rectangle. So by that reason, the area of this re rectangle equals twenty. Now let's see the next example, 4.6. This one, see here, the, air, the length of one side of a rectangle is four less than three times an adjacent side. The perimeter of the rectangle is 64. They ask you to find the area of the rectangle. So, still follow what I told you. First, draw a rectangle here. Then, now let's see here. Say, length of the one side is four less than three times of adjacent side. Now, suppose this side is uh, x, then this side will equals 3x minus 4 because this sentence 3 less than 4 less than 3 times adjacent side suppose this adjacent side equals x then this side will equals 3 times x minus 4 now because this is a rectangle, so that means this side also equals 3x minus 4. This side will equals x. Then they give you the perimeter of this rectangle equals 64. So that means you use 2 times x, princess x plus 3x minus 4. This one will give you 64. Now solve this equation. So we can merge this uh, term, leg terms, get a 4x minus 4. So both sides, you can divide by 2. 
then you got the 4x minus 4 equals 32. Then you can take this 4, you know, here, you can also both side plus 4. You got a 4x equals 36. Then both sides divided by 4. You got x equals 9. Okay? So, do the step by step. This is very, very important. This will help you to, uh, to escape to get any error. You know, when you try solve an equation, if you just skip a lot of steps, it's very easy to make a mistake. Like a sign, you put the wrong, wrong sign or put the wrong number there. I always suggest, don't be rushed, just do step by step. Then help you to get the correct answer, x equals 9. Now let's see 4.7. A triangle that has a right angle as one of its angle is called right triangle. Okay, right angle means that angle equals 90 degree. Suppose we draw a, a right triangle here. Okay, so now let's see here. Uh, found the area of the right triangle ABC where AB equals 4, BC equals 6. Now let's say here, suppose uh, this one is A, this one is B, this one is C. So AB equals 4, BC equals 6. Then, oh no, they draw like this way, okay? So that means this AB equals 4, BC equals 6. Now they ask you what is the area of this triangle? That's very easy, right? You, you can consider AB that space, BC is ab attitude or height. Then the area of this triangle equals 4 times 6, then divided by 2. If you don't know this uh, area formula, does not matter. You can imagine you draw another exactly triangles here. Then you connect this. Say, suppose this triangle is uh, A, B prime, C. You can say this triangle is congruent with this one. These two congruent. That means this area of this triangle also equals area of this triangle. If I put another one here, you get a rectangle. Each side, this one's four. This, that means here also four. This side six, that means here is six. So then you got an area of this rectangle equals 4 by 6. We already know this, right? Then to calculate the area of this rectangle, you just divide by 2. Because this one is half of this uh, rectangle. So by this way, you use AB times BC, then divide by 2. This gives you the area of this uh, triangle ABC. Now CB found the formula for the area of the right triangle given the length of its side. Suppose this actually is the form formula, right? Area equals this AB times BC divided by 2. That's a formula. Now let's see next one, 4.8. This one gives you the triangle DEF. They ask you to find the area of this triangle. Given J, it's on EF. And uh, DJ, that's equals 8. And DJ, perpendicular to EF, 
and the EF equals 7. Okay, suppose EF equals 7. Then they ask you find the area of this triangle. That's very easy, right? Just use base times attitude. You know, if you don't know this formula, you can move this one, this triangle D, E, J to here. You can imagine this one will be like this. You put that one here. That's one exactly like this. Okay, something like this. Then put here. Now let's see. You connect this to point. You can do this way. But this way now, let's see. Uh, this way probably is still not right because you don't know this part but okay okay yeah we actually we don't need to do this because this one it's uh this line already separate this triangle to two right triangles we already learned how to calculate area of right triangles right now let's first calculate area of uh, right triangle d e j that's who equals e j times d j then divided by 2. This gives us area of DEJ. Then area of triangle DFJ. That equals DJ times JF. Then divided by 2. Right? Then you can write this one. Say what is the common factor here? DJ. So that means we can take DJ out. Then what are we left? That's EJ, EJ plus JF, then divided by 2, right? So then EJ plus JF, that's equals EF. So then we got the, the area of this triangle equals DJ times EF, then divided by 2. Right? So this one gives you the area of this triangle, general triangle. Because we already know the air, how to calculate area of right triangle. For general triangle, after you draw this uh, line DJ, they separate this general triangle to two right triangle. Then we can use the sum of these two right triangles to represent the area of this large general triangle. So then you can count this number will equal dj, that's 8, base, that's uh, 7, divided by 2. You got this area equals 28. So then you know for triangle, why? For general triangle, it's area equals base times attitude, then divided by 2. Okay, this one's the correct answer. Now, let's say 4.9. Given angle Z, X, Y equals X, W, Y equals 90 degree x y equals 8 x z equals 6 z y let's see z y equals 10 then they ask you find x w ask you find x w okay how to do this everybody do it then send me your answer if you can get it Think, just use the uh, area what we found here, just we learned here. You know, triangle X, Y, Z, it's a right triangle. Triangle X, Y, Z is a right triangle. 
So that means we can calculate the area of triangle X, Y, Z. This one give us the area equals 6 times 8 divided by 2. So then that means this one equals 24. Now we also can calculate the triangle area of triangle X, Y, Z use uh, X, W, Z plus X, W, Y. The area of triangle X, Y, Z also equals sum of these two areas. So now let's say area of triangle X, W, Z equals y. This one will equals zw times xw divided by 2. That's zw times xw divided by 2. Then plus what's the area of uh, xwy? That's equals uh, wy times xw then divided by 2. Okay, so now let's simplify this. They all have this co common factor xw. Let's take xw out. xw out. So here we got a zw plus wy. Then divided by 2. zw plus wy, that's equal zy. So this one equals xw times zy, then divided by 2. Now let's see. What is, uh, what is zy? You know, in right triangle x, y, z, we know these two legs, the hypotenuse just equals 8 square plus 6 square then square root. So that's give us this one equals 10. Right? Zy equals 10. So we got a xw times 10, then divided by 2. This one should equal 24. Because this give us area of triangle x, y, z. So then you solve this equation, you get the x W will equals 24 divided by 5, right? If you write this one as a decimal, that's actually equals, let's say, 4.8, right? 4.8. Or you can write that's 24 over 5. Got it? So this plot, you will see this kind of plot a lot of lot of times. This one is very very interesting. Use this one, you can prove Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean formula, right? So you can prove that a square plus b square equals c square. You can also find three pair of similar triangles, similar. We will learn that one in the next chapter, not congruent. So this shape, it's very, very interesting. We will a lot of uh, relationship in this shape. So we can uh, finish this uh, now, this one. Actually, we finish this uh, section. Now let's see what is uh, homework. Homework definitely will be the exercise problem behind each each uh, section. Now let's see this one. Last one. Now let's see if we can solve this one. We have a star here. That means this one is a very difficult problem. See, the parameter 
of a square garden is 64 meters. Okay, the parameter of square garden is 64 meters. The path, okay, this one's garden. And uh, the path surround the garden has a uniform width has and has an area of 228 square meters. So this road has uh, 228 square meters. The parameter of this square that's 64. Okay. Oh, Richard already got an answer. Okay. Now see how many meters of the fences are needed to surround the outer edge of the path. They ask you what is the parameter of this large surround outer edge of the path. So from the the parameter of this guard garden equals 64 64 divided by 4. You got each side of this garden equals 16, right? Then they tell us the area of this uh, green green color, this path that's 228. So now we can use uh, now let's say suppose the each side of this uh, this large square that equals x. Then we can get x square minus 16 square. That's the area of the garden. Give us 228, right? So then you can solve x. You get x square equals 228. 16 square, that's 256. Got it together. This is 4, this is 8. 484 square root. You get an x equals 20, 22, right? Because this one divided by 4, you got a one, 121. That's 11 square, then times 4, then square root. x equals 22. So that means x equals 22. Then 22 times 4. That's 88. So time is up. We can stop here. Then see you next time.